Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. How's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty well today. It is Sunday. What is this? Oh, where's my, on the, it's the 11th, August the 11th, Sunday, August the 11th. I hope I'm right. 90% of the time I'm wrong, but anyway, um, I want to do a reading. I have lots of readings I need to do, but I, of course, want to do a reading on Jeffrey Epstein. Everybody wants to do it. Everybody wants to hear about what's going on with him. That was some freaky stuff. Let me tell you what happened. On Saturday morning, it's hotter than hell here, y'all. It's been in the 100s. You know, today was like 102, 103. This dog don't even want to go out more than five minutes. That's how hot it is. And in the mornings when I wake up, I have my fan on over the bed. And but even, even, even so, it's warm, you know. I feel like it's really warm. And I wake up hot. I go to sleep hot. And, and the air conditioner just keeps going and going. Well, Saturday morning, I woke up. Uh, my, my daughter's gone out of town, so I'm in charge of all the dogs. And the dogs naturally come in here and wake me up before 7 o'clock. They want to go out. So they woke me up. I was freezing cold Saturday. It was so weird. And it was, it was hot. It was hot outside. But I just woke up with this chill. I mean, really cold chill. And it was weird. And I'm like, wow, I'm so cold. And I was so sleepy. Um, and I just couldn't get over how, how bizarrely cold I was, you know. So I let the dogs out and everything. And I went out into the front room. I fed them their food. And then I laid down on the couch. I turned on the TV and I laid on the couch and I put the couch blanket all on me <clears throat> and I went back to sleep. And the next thing I knew, I, I'm waking up. I'm still so cold. I'm waking up and I'm hearing uh, Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide. And I'm like, what? What? I couldn't believe it. I cannot believe that the authorities, uh, you know, weren't taking care of him. They were supposed to be responsible for him. If they incarcerate you, they're responsible for your life, you know? So he had already tried to commit suicide once, so they were supposed to be watching out for that. So I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was just shocking to hear that. Shocking. You know, I understand maybe the first time they it kind of, they were blindsided by it. They didn't but the second time, come on, that you already knew what he wanted to do, what was in his mind. So what I did earlier was I was just um, channeling Jeffrey. The first time that I channeled him, I, I did it yesterday a little bit. And the first thing that I got was, um, even y'all might not like to hear this, but this is the way it is. When you pass over, it doesn't matter what you've done in this life. You still pass over onto the other side. You don't go to hell. Um, you, you're still greeted with love when you pass over. No matter what you've done, not, it doesn't matter. You're greeted with love. So when he passed over, I think he was really... Uh, he was really shocked how peaceful how wonderful and peaceful and full of love it was. So he passed over and he passed over with love and peacefulness. So he's, he's at peace no matter what he did, you know, and what went on. He, he's at peace. He's probably going through something on the other side. You have to, you know, take responsibility for what you've done and work through things. Um, not, the, not like being incarcerated here and doing it. And that was yesterday, and I, that's what I just got yesterday. I did it briefly. I didn't really focus on it a whole lot. I just did it very briefly, but I felt he felt a lot of love and a lot of peace when he crossed over. So now I wanted to speak to him, and I have him in front of me, and I see he bows his head. He bows his head. You know, he's maybe you know, a little bit ashamed of what he did while he was here, but he bows his head. He has tears. Um, and I just ask him, you know, did you commit suicide? Were you, did somebody murder you? I'm just asking him all these questions, you know, and
so he, the way he answers, he's not answering me exactly the, the way I wish he would, but this is what he says. He says he was like a, like a crazy genius. He's comparing himself to like a Picasso, you know, uh, Picasso would paint these crazy paintings you know, you, I always see the eye, an eye on a painting when I think of Picasso. And so I'm seeing that in my mind. And he's just saying, you know, like Picasso, you know, he he would do these crazy things and, and uh, paint these crazy paintings. But, you know, people would pay a lot for them. People do pay a lot for them. You know, they aren't really, you know, if you look at the whole picture, it's not really a beautiful picture, but people want it and they pay a lot for them. So that's what it's kind of, that's what he's saying. That's what he's comparing it to. I don't know. He's not giving me like details. He's just giving me an analogy like. So I'm asking him if he, did he hang himself? You know, did he, did he commit suicide? Did you hang yourself? And the, I get from him, I keep getting, I'm a good soldier. I see a soldier. I'm a good soldier. So, and then I see, I, I see a man being dangled from a window. So I feel like if he didn't take his own life, someone else would have, something would have happened to him. He probably would have been murdered. So I feel like he is protecting others. But also he, out of a sense, some kind of weird loyalty, sense of duty. So I'm not, so I'm asking him, are you trying to protect Maxwell? That, isn't that her name, Maxwell, that lady? And do you feel remorseful? He says, uh, he sh it was, he said it was just like, it's like a big cockfight. The strongest rooster survives. <laughs> and then I see, then I see packs of scrolled up papers. You know what I mean? Like just scrolled up papers shoved in packs. So I feel like this is information. Does this information make you strong? Is that what, is that what it means? And he says, well, it fills you up. It fills you up. What does that mean? What do you do with this information? And then he shows me the sky. The sky's the limit. So I don't know what that means. Every time I ask him how he feels about the girls and I'm asking him, um, I keep getting like a blue smoke screen. Like he doesn't want to talk about that or that he's not ready to answer that um, or I'm not asking the right question or something. But every time I want to go to what happened with the girls and all that, he's just not answering me, basically. He's putting up a smoke screen. He doesn't want to answer that. Maybe he's not ready to or maybe, you know... He's still protecting from the other side. He's protecting the others still. So, you know, when we cross over, we still have our personalities and all. So maybe he's still in that state of denial. So let me see if I can get something uh, from the cards. Let me see what I can get. So straighten this desk up here so I can have a little room. Trying to make a mess. All right, let's see. All right, well, the first card that he gets is the Nine of Swords. So, um, he was very fearful. He had a lot of anxiety. He was overwhelmed, uh, worried, stressed. He was at the breaking point. He was. He was at the breaking point. So 
I, I think he took his own life. I feel like he did take his own life because he was at the breaking point. Yeah. Uh, the card that crosses over is the Queen of Cups. Um, this could be this could be that Lady Maxwell. This is an older female, uh, and he was really worried about what would happen to her. So I don't know if y'all can see that. My light's kind of weird tonight. Maybe if I put it back, it's a little easier. Um, overlooking the situation, Seven of Cups. So yeah, he had a he had a lot of decisions to make. You know, this is all about. Um, making a very emotional decision. Do you, should he start talking, give up information, you know, uh, live in fear of being murdered or take his own life, you know, or go through a trial. There's so many different things to decide about doing. And I, he was just over, overwhelmed with all these things coming out. All this stuff is going to come out, y'all. So I think he definitely took his own life. You know, it may, maybe it was made easy for him to do that. You know, maybe there was somebody else, you know, there was, there was a way for him to do it. Somebody it looked the other way, put it that way. So I don't know if that was just, if, if it was set up like that through his attorneys or through, you know, I don't know, but it was made where he would be able to take his own life. So I don't know if somebody was paid off, something like that. This is the King of Cups. Um, so he just, he thought this was the wisest decision that he could make. Uh, taking his own life was the most compassionate thing to do, you know? Um, and his, he could be, if you knew him, he could be a very charming guy and a very generous guy. So he felt like, you know, he, he didn't want to put himself through that. He didn't want to be in prison. He didn't want to put himself through that. He didn't want, uh, he, he is protecting others. He didn't want to put others through that also through a trial. And even the women, even the women uh, with him gone, they didn't have to go through a trial either. So I don't think he looked at it like they would never ever get their day in court. He was just thinking, you know, if, if I'm not here, nobody has to go through all this. So you know, that's just his mindset, you know. Uh, this is in the past position. This is the Nine of Cups. Did you see that, y'all? <laughs> he was here. <laughs> he was here. Um, wow. You know, he was, um, he was a very ambitious person. He, were, he really was, and he made his mark in the world. He fulfilled his dreams. Um, he, made out of the, he made the most out of the opportunities that he was afforded in this life. That's what, that's what this is just me. And he loved luxury. He really did. He loved the luxury life. You know, most of us never would get a sample of it. <laughs> this is uh, the Queen of Swords. And I think... Um, I think this is just a representation of the women that um, didn't get their day in court, you know, but I think that we're going to hear them all speak. We're going to um, be clear on what happened. They're going to tell the truth of what happened. We're going to be clear on it. We're going to hear from them. Um, and we're all going to be, you know, we're all going to know the truth and get clarity on the whole situation regarding these women anyway, on that part of it. We are going to, we're going to know the truth. So, and, and I had seen in the paper, in, not in the paper, but in uh, read on, on the internet that these women will probably sue his estate. So they probably will. And in the course of that, we're going to hear more information and the truth of everything that happened is going to come out. And they're telling the truth. This is just the queen of swords is just saying, they're being truthful. They're telling the truth. They're telling what really happened. So we'll be clear on the truth. That's what happened. I don't know if other people will go down for it, but they will tell the truth of what happened. So, okay, guys. So that's what I got on Jeffrey Epstein. I feel like he did take his own life um, himself. He wasn't murdered, but he was, you know, afforded that possibility to do it. Somebody made sure that everybody was looking the other way. <laughs> My 
she's there on the bed sleep. I thought she left it. I'm like, she's still there. So anyway, uh, I just want to tell, um, thank you, Jeffrey, for coming and speaking to us and telling us what you did. Maybe later on, you know, when time has gone by, we can talk to him again and get some, get more information. I don't know uh, if he will, you know, tell us anything else, but maybe later on we can get more information from him, but that's all I got for now. Um, okay, guys, thanks for listening to me. I appreciate it. I'm going to my mom's probably this week, so I don't know how many more videos I'll do, but I am going to go to my mother's. I keep telling her I'm going to go help her and I need to, I need to be a good daughter and go do that. <laughs> I've been trying to call her every day and she doesn't answer her phone. I don't know what the deal is. I have sisters that live close by her, so I know she's okay. And I don't know if she just doesn't want me to come because I have to stay there for the whole week and she's not answering my phone calls. Maybe it's easier just to not answer them than to say, don't come. <laughs> So I just take it as a don't come because she could call me back because I'm she sees my number on her phone. So I don't know. Maybe I'm not going to go, but maybe I am. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot for listening to me. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't know if y'all see it, but I have lots of orbs going around in my room today. I can see them in the screen. I've seen a couple go here and there. I used to get them all the time, but I I'm seeing them really good now. So. And the air, air conditioner is not on at all. It's not on. And I, I turned my fan off and everything so I can make sure that, I, you know, it isn't dust flying up or anything. So anyway. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Uh, if you'd like to get a reading with me, my summer readings are still special for $25. You can get a reading uh, down below if you look. It's Trudy Lee Tarot at Hotmail.com. Okay. All right, guys. Do something kind for somebody. It'll always come back to you. Bye for now. Talk to you soon.